Welcome back guys, welcome back to the second part of our Neeb versus Rogue game. We've got a very economic game here for you guys. Hopefully you guys have seen part number one, if not, check the dude out up here. A uh, little, little, little icon that should have already popped up by now. And in the very first part of the game, we're talking about benchmarks that we want to hit and how we're breaking this episode down into ideas at, as opposed to like supply or time or something along those lines. In that vein, the very first segment of these videos was about setting up an economy while having enough army alive to annoy the hell out of your opponent. In this particular stage, we're going to be opening up into a more defensive structure. You saw that the Zerg was really the defensive person in part one with a little bit of light pressure being applied uh, by Neeb, our Protoss player. The roles in this particular segment start out flipped, wherein it is up to the Zerg to be applying pressure to the defensive Protoss, and that's actually going to be a theme moving out through the rest of this game, because as you remember, in part one, Neeb did the pressure, but despite the pressure, Rogue was able to hit that three base mineral saturation that he so desperately wanted, so everything from here on out is going to be mostly him utilizing that economy. Without further ado, we're going to jump right in. So switching ourselves back to the Protoss point of view, we're about to be hitting a Protoss benchmark, 7 minutes and 30 seconds. This is going to be one of the more defensive portions of the game for the Protoss. As you can see, we've added on the Robo. This is going to be for Immortals in case of Roaches. You can do various things with this, but for the most part, Immortals are, are the way to go. We've got a Twilight Council to help with the Zealot Legs. Got plus one weapons. Got a Templar Archive, which is uh, producing Psychonic Storm. We've already begun walling in this third to deal with the Ling pressure. And this is the very first cannon in this game. Up to this point, we have not seen cannons. We have gone for more mobile defenses. This is also the first shield battery of this game. So it's interesting how Neeb chooses to defend himself at the third he knows that the attacks are going to be at the third and then eventually at the fourth but there was still a lot of poking here and yet he managed to hold that it's just interesting and we've added on from the original four assimilators a fifth and sixth assimilator a little bit of poking here from the oracle some really uh good constant harassment from the phoenix on killing those overlords and a very very fast fourth base here by rogue of course this is going to get scouted by or i said by rogue i'm sorry by neeb and this is going to get scouted by rogue some really good uh force fields there forcing half that ling army to get suicided it is going to cost him two high templar and you know an archon which were the same thing but either way we are working our way to the eight and a half minute mark and that phoenix got cleaned up but we've got plus two weapons about to be starting um and this is the the more expansive portion of the build so we went from defensive to expansive he's expanding um and at this point he's gonna want to defend this so the fourth base has started and you're gonna notice he's gonna start clearing these rocks this actually makes it easier for him to defend rather than having his whole army trying to funnel here like up here to defend any of this or down here to defend this this is just going to make it easier to do both and here we're going to be working our way towards what i think is perhaps the first real mistake neeb makes in this game um as you can see this fourth base and this area here are very very close together if you come through this narrow choke point with an entire army, it can be devastating for either party, depending on the creep spread and the positioning of the armies. Now, as you can see, Rogue's army is actually splitting up. His mineral stuff's all going here. His really gas-heavy stuff's going down here. He's also taking the Oracle. The goal of this, I understand. He actually wants to kill off some creep, which is a very noble goal. However, Rogue is in a perfect position here. And this is a very narrow choke to be running out of, especially against speed banelings on creep. Do you feel what I'm saying here? So that's kind of the problem right now. A lot of gas being expended here. 
Good psionic storm though, and it is going to allow him to escape, so it's not as bad as it could have been, but this is kind of an oh crap moment for Neeb. But let's look at the state of the game. At this point, he has got his four base economy. He's only about 11 workers behind his opponent, and he's killed 13 of his opponents, so that's always good. Eh, he's got plus two uh, ground weapons, that's pretty good. Some immortals, he's got really good high gas uh, army. And he's got a fleet beacon on the way, which means he's very close to carriers. That's the ultimate endpoint here for, for Protoss right now. He's also got 7th and 8th Assimilator. So that's also really good for a Protoss. He, but he still seems really nervous about this 4th. Like, look how many shield batteries are here. He didn't have any at his natural. He's only got one at his 3rd, and that with a cannon, because, you know, it's hard to jump from here to here. So even this decision, which we highlighted earlier, kind of points to his nervousness about holding this base. This extra shield battery, again, points to that. You can see... Like, he sees his army kind of fighting here with this concave here supporting it against an army around here. And this is actually really good logic by, uh, by Neeb. But again, he's nervous. And these zealots are going to be used kind of limit creep, get some scouting around, and just see what's going on. But ultimately, he he's going to want to keep them somewhere at home to defend any kind of Ling run buys, because that's, that's been the modus operandi right now for Rogue. And we are working our way to the last Protoss benchmark of this game, which is going to be the 11 minute mark. Good Silent Storms going down, good force fields, but ultimately not an engagement. Neeb just wanting to scare his opponent and limit that creep. So here we go. Closing in in 11 minutes. What do we have? Neeb is very concerned about limiting creep. Look at the incredible levels of creep that Neeb knows about. He's working on taking this fifth base. He's got plus three weapons production on the way. He's got Graviton Catapult, which carrier upgrade great he's got some carriers on the way that's beautiful but protoss as a whole has a hard time with zone control protoss has to keep their army grouped up and that means a slow response time to harassment neeb himself plays greedy which reinforces that he skips cannons at a lot of his bases and he can be punished heavily for that which is where we're going to be going momentarily. I told you guys about the Baneling Drops. I promised you Baneling Drops. We will have Baneling Drops, but not until we rewind and take a look at Rogue. At this point in the game, if you remember, there it's mostly been just Rogue defending. He's about to get a little bit more aggressive, and he's going to do a lot of poking around. But we've seen most of this, so... We're just going to fast forward our way right on into the next stage of this game. Here at 8 minutes, we see this all over again. And the only thing that's happening behind this are the upgrades we talked about, hydralisks being produced, and bases being taken, drones being made. He's doing a fine job balancing army versus drone production. Nothing wrong with uh, how he's doing this. He's actually ahead on economy at this particular moment, but this has been a constant tug of war for the two of them. And we're about a minute away. So just seeing all this from the Zerg perspective. And if this was in your own game, and you were actually, you know, playing in Rogue's shoes right now. If you were actually, you know, at 10 minutes, 30 seconds, these are the overall objectives you're going to want to have achieved. And you can actually watch your own replays and say, did I do this? Check. Did I do this? Check. Did I do this? Nope. That's how I can improve. That's the goal of providing you this checklist. For every matchup, I'm going to try and provide this. 
This is Zerg vs. Protoss. Specifically a carrier variation, but all of these are going in with a grain of sand because you never know what you're going to be facing until you face it. Ten and a half minutes. We've got the five bases. One, two, three, four, five, and a macro hatchery. We've got plus two melee. Now complete. Overlord speed. We've got drop overlords. We've got 12 banelings loaded up in drop overlords. And he's over here somewhere. Boom, right there. There's about 40 others on the field. So this is an interesting situation because you see how he's kind of splitting all this. What's exactly his plan here? It's actually fairly brilliant. We're going to look at that tactically. But first I want you to understand the structure that supports it. Because that's actually the important part. Remember, StarCraft's about macro. It's about the production behind what you're doing and not actually what you're doing, which is just the micro. This is a strategy that focuses on baneling rain on bases. And what Rogue's going to do is force these probes at this base, this base, maybe this base, He's going to try and force them all to congregate in one little central location and then roll all the banelings into that. And you can see a little bit of harassment in the form of those zealots. Well, that's fine. This army actually staying engaged here on this side of the map. And the first of these overlords is going to be arriving. Wait a second. Did, oh, yep. No, it's right there. It's actually just chilling. So he's actually got the timing here pulled like perfect. This one first. This one's going to be coming in. And then this one's just chilling. These guys are all right here. Like this is some excellent control here by Rogue. And here's the first Overlord. Now he's going to start dropping these Banelings. And the Banelings are being very, very careful to just continue to follow. Now he has scouted this. But notice that this is just continuing to follow. There's not a cannon here to do damage, so no biggie. Adept trying to stop this, but the damage actually isn't from the Baneling. And nice pickup on this Overlord. See the Banelings here rolling in. We see all of this coming in. And I imagine that there was a Overlord. Oh, yep, there he is. So that right there, forcing these probes. This guy rolling in here, these bait, these probes almost about to run into these. Actually going to be smart enough to pull away. Now this is actually the perfect moment to split. Rogue sending some of these here and the rest here. The devastation is insane. 62 workers killed. That is a game changing moment right there. Now you probably won't get that kind of kill unless you have Rogue's control. In which case, great. You probably didn't need to watch this video. But my point here is this. If you're hitting these benchmarks, you can have similar results, if not the exact same results. Your opponents are not need in the same way that you are not rogue. So here by 11 minutes and 30 seconds, what should your final benchmarks be as the Zerg player? Hive, of course, to have a hive, you're gonna have an infestation pit. Plus one missile attacks doesn't hurt because now we're focusing more on the hydras. The plus two melee was the goal and then we're switching. Adrenal glands, yeah, it's going to be starting here eventually. Six bases, check. Five queens, check. Insane creep spread, <laughs> yeah, you could say that. And at this point, you just continue flooding zerglings. Non-stop zerglings. And at this stage in the game, the goal is just to survive. If you can survive there's no way your opponent comes back from this so you don't need to do any more damage you don't need to trade any banelings for like to kill a base or some crazy stuff like that you don't even need to peel off a handful of lings to go you know harass your opponent literally this is it this is the apocalypse this is the plains of megiddo this is armageddon and that could mean getting a spire that would, would be the safe decision because we do know it's going to be carriers so here around 12 minutes, we're going to see the Spire starting. There's the Adrenal Lens we talked about, and there's the Spire. And finally, this is the final battle. Banelings rolling, rolling, rolling. 
carrier doing its carrying thing. The lings and the banelings and the hydras coming in. And as you can see, it's still a very, very close army supply count. But the economy makes a difference here. Need cannot reinforce this army. Rogue will have no problem reinforcing this army. So as long as he continues hitting his injects, and that's something I want to urge you guys to focus on, this is no problem. G a G. Guys, I hope this helped your Zerg vs. Protoss. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Give this video a thumbs up if you want to let the YouTube gods know you like this content and that you want to see more of it. It'll throw that in your algorithm and hopefully show you some more of our videos. And uh, until next time, guys, I am Shaft with Polygon Gaming. If you are not already subscribed to the channel, what's wrong with you? Subscribe, hit that uh, notification bell as well because apparently subscribing is not enough for the YouTube gods anymore. Sacrifice as you will. Ultimately, we want to be uh, building more of a community environment when it comes to uh, this content. So we're doing uh, the continuation of Newbie Tuesday, but we're also going to be setting up a fun day in like the fun day Monday spirit of things like day nine had set up. So we want to do a little bit more of that. If you guys would like to participate, please send in uh, your replays to polygonsc2 at gmail.com. And I will be reviewing those. I'll pick the best ones to uh, to either incorporate into the video or respond to as a uh, educational video. Um, if you have particular games or players that you guys would like to see more of, or if you know of replay packs that you'd like to tell me about, please leave that information in the comments below. Um, if you want to support local events in the North Carolina area, if you want to see more online events from us with like Innovation Classic, all your favorite players. Please go to our Patreon, patreon.com slash polygon se2. Any size donation really does count, guys. Until next time, shadow my dudes. If you want to be notified when we release videos like this, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you don't know where that is, I'm not going to teach you how to use the internet. There's probably no hope for you.